Let me see, Nate. Con <laughs> let's continue on. Um, all right. So do you guys, um, the boat, you guys continue getting pushed on up this river further and further as the stream uh, pushes you onwards. And did that move your guys' boat on your screen? It did? I did. Because it didn't on my player screen. So I might freeze yeah, again because I'm going to refresh this. One yes. Yeah. Alright, cool. So, as you guys... <laughs> bum, 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 you can see up to the left and to the right now, right? As you're at the end of this little mm -hmm. edge. Alright, you guys can see you find yourself standing at this you know, edge of a vast underground lake. It's dark water stretching out before you. And in the middle of this cavernous expanse lies an island um, out to the left, shrouded in mystery and guarded by the shadows. Um, the island itself is a remarkable sight to behold. It sits proudly in the center of the lake like a, like a lone jewel in the crown of this underground realm. Finally, something out of, you know, you guys have been traveling in this darkness for, it's been probably close to two hours at this point. Um, you finally break through and see this vast expanse in this, this island sitting here. And it rises above the water um, in this dome-shaped area. This roof in here is about 120 feet high, uh, totally encasing this hidden sanctuary. Uh, with this air of grandeur, and the structure though atop the island is what really captures your attention because it's like a stone fortress that stands tall. Its formidable presence evident um, from this distance even that you guys are sitting at. Um, the outer walls reach up an impressive height about 20 feet and they create a solid barrier around this fortress as if w warding off any unwelcome intruders. Um, and at irregular intervals um, imposing 30 feet high towers emerge, um, standing proud and watchful. And each one of these towers, um, you know, about two stories high, you guys can see they're adorned with all sorts of battlements, you know, ballista, and even flame cannons. And you can see there are men up there at the ballista, like ready and scanning in the, the area. And clearly, this place is somewhere where danger lurks, and the defenders are prepared for any sort of assault or any intrusions. Uh, but what's really more intriguing is the site of this natural column of rock that extends from the very heart of this fortress. It kind of rises up like a stalagmite, um, connecting with the cavern ceiling, or almost connecting with the cavern ceiling high above. And it's almost as if the island is anchored to the very bones of the earth, providing strong foundation for this fortress above. And as you guys you know, begin to look out there and you see all of this, not only do you see this impressive you know, island and fortress built upon it, uh, I'd say Wilma and Fang, you guys also seem to notice some gray-looking slime and ooze forming on the walls up to your northwest, uh, continuing up through that tunnel. Um, and with that, you also hear a splashing sound in the waters down to your, uh, southwest as, um, some kuatoa, some fish-faced humanoids <clears throat> to splash into the water and swim up northwards up there in front of your ship and, and continuing up there. You guys, you know, it's quite dark and, and murky in here and really had to be spotting to see this, but you guys do see these two fish-faced humanoids swimming in the distance and up through this tunnel to the northeast uh, where the right where you saw that gray, gray slime too. Would I um, know that Physical there's line? potentially undead in here? Um, your helm's not going off currently, and, you know, you're not aware of any. Okay. Um, uh, Wilma, would you be able to take my helm off? I just don't want to, I don't want there to potentially be any undead in here and me hurt Absolutely. them. Yeah, so, like, while we're, while we're going up, we've done this, take the helm off, I can put it in, in, in his, uh, in his bag, and I go... Do we want to keep this facade going, or do you guys think the people at Skullport are going to know who you guys are? I think we it's best to keep the facade going. Um, who knows if those skulls are still paying any attention to us somehow while we're down here. Um, I think it just it's a good alibi, I think, for us to be down here. I mean, look at all the mounted ballistas that we see. Uh, we're kind of in a bad spot. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, when you said the the slime, would 
either of them recognize it as Usus slime? Yeah, or... that's what I was actually just about yeah. to ask. Fang certainly would. <laughs> so it's it's clearly Abelus slime. Yeah. Yeah, would you guys have learned well, then... uh, at least Fang and Silrak from, especially like in the books and whatnot in uh, Moongleam Towers? Uh, that's a telltale sign of a of an Abelus. Uh, in their in their environments. You guys have spotted it a few times yourself as well in your own experiences. So Wilma, so, I, I think maybe Usith the Abolith, uh, you know, because that slime is definitely from him. Uh, maybe he is located down that hallway or down that passage up. This one to the right, the, right? That's to the west. No, I'm, if I said west, I meant east. It's it is up. Right, oh, okay. That way. Yeah. Do we um do we park it for a little bit and look at skull ports and maybe ask around or do we head right over? Do we and I kinda like slap Solrak around a little bit just to, to see if he wakes up because he had took a little micro a little nap while we were going. <laughs> so, um, what happened? It was dark. Be sweet. There's 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 fish people in the water, and there appears to be an abelisk named Uthis most likely um, to the right over here. Um, yeah. Do we want to go into Skullport and, you know, I can show everybody my two prized possessions, or do we just kind of paddle over to the right? Well, uh, do you remember, uh, Elmore knew that Abelith, if that I remember the name correctly. So, even though it sounds scary, be friendly. <laughs> I, I think for the time being, because if, if we head to the right, we are potentially in for it if we come across Usith. Um, I think maybe we kind of survey the land of Skullport while we're here. Uh, maybe we just park the vessel in one of those docks over there and kind of scan around. And then we proceed with potentially going down to see Usith. Sure. We could, there's supposed to be some weapon housed here. So, we could find out as much until as we can, see if it is in the town. Maybe. It's maybe. There's a weapon here? I think so. I think there's supposed to be something here. Housed. Yeah, so we are, I don't know if the Soulmonger is really the name, because we thought the Soulmonger was in Narvi's temple, but... To our understanding, there is something else that's down here that's harnessing the energy off of the souls. That's right. And perhaps oh, yes, they were feeding them. Um, yes, and so perhaps that's the Abolith. W Wilma would uh, have some other intel on that, and it's not necessarily souls, actually. Yeah, I think they were just feeding just just people to it. I, f I feel like it might be the... Uh, I think that might be our Abolith friend. Right, so it's even stronger than before. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You forget one thing. Wilmore was supposed to be the Avalith's, like, little slave thing, right? Narvi killed them. Which means... No, you're you're getting it mixed up with Wilmore's Balor friend. It was... Yeah. It was... It was... It was to Wilmore my understanding... To, to an Avalith. No, I thought it was your that was Frank. That was, a, that was a that was a big uh, fiery guy. A little I different. Your, I thought it was your bird friend Luke Gange that had some sort of pack with the Abolith, yeah, and maybe that's why he left you guys. I thought that's what you had said before. Oh, I thought they both pack. Uh, but never mind. <clears throat> but regardless, it seems as if we obviously have to try and fuck up an abolith today. Um, should we just head that route, or do you think we should, again, try and, uh, I guess, gather oh. some intel? Town knows we're here. Oh, yeah, yeah no, he's the only person. Yeah, there, he's 
he's feeding memories and minds to a to a brain down here. Do do we think that the abolith would be a would be a brain? So to oh, speak? Uh, he's feeding it to a brain. Well, they said. Uh, basically, I I found a I found an old Zantam friend and um you know chopped him into little pieces until he talked and they're feeding memories um to something he kept calling the brain um uh, yeah. I, I i don't know if that would be the abolith or if that would be something else maybe that is not the abolith that is the same brain that but Solrek, you guys found it moon moon gleam tower yeah sounds like right but i thought he was a good brain no oh. no 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 I wouldn't have even thought about that as being an actual brain. <clears throat> Smart fellow. Brain. He was literally a brain. Well, maybe <laughs> um, they did say he was in Skullport, so so maybe well, we would. Um, so he's weekend. probably hiding in here somewhere. He kind maybe of we go the tower. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe we go into Skullport. I think it's because if I, them. if I recall correctly from um, Wilmore's writings, he was, he was actually one of the wizards that um, locked my baby up. That's right. Yep, that's right. So I think we know where we need to go. Um, Fang, will you make a history check? Yeah. I am historical. Oh yeah. Oh. Cool. I'll still. Yeah. Let's see. No, no guidance on this because it's just you recalling something. It's not yeah. you're like physically okay. doing something. Um. So the twenty one still. Yeah. No. Uh. You know, as soon as like Wil or Wilma says this about you know feeding a brain and you obviously make a connection. It wasn't Moon Gleam Tower. Also, it was it was in Lylon. It was the, that tower there. Moon Gleam Tower is the Harper's Tower. And that's, that's right, right. That's right. That's right. But um. Regardless. You clearly you had a you had nightmare in Yartar of a brain in some sort of subterranean, uh, floating in some sort of waters, murky waters of sorts, and you know, calling to you and beckoning to you, and uh, you know, large with tentacles writhing from it in sorts. And you know, when Wilma brings up this brain, of course you you think of the brain that you guys <coughs> saw uh, there in in Lylon, but this dream, this nightmare that you had clearly sticks out to you as a stark memory and um just kind of seems like there's a connection there to you from um my so making that connection um and like seeing like the waters would that kind of like i don't know if deja vu is like the right word but like does the water in here kind of resemble the water that was in my dream or nightmare um, yeah, so like if you look around, of course, uh, the to your left is what is known as Skull Island. Um, and if you yeah, guys, yeah. I'm not sure if you can see, but uh, to the north of there, there's a bridge, and that's what actually connects yeah. to Skull Port itself, the actual like city up there. Mm -hmm. um, so you imagine like up there and whatnot, it's you know it's a city. There's not water or a kind of these pools of or filth or you know these <laughs> kind of vile liquids in there, but. You know, then you look up to the right, and you see the slimy ooze on the walls, and uh, you know the water a little murky and oily this way. And you know, in your mind, you think there's more of a possibility that it's somewhere. You know, you you have this like weird, just like gut sensation that there's more likely to be found to the northeast than in the actual city itself. But of course, intel could certainly possibly be gathered. And so, like, from my nightmare, it almost sounded like, um, so the brain obviously kind of, like, it almost sounds like from my nightmare and what I'm kind of connecting now that the brain and Usith, the Ablith, are, like, connected and, like, working, obviously they're working together, but, like, they're definitely like connected more deeper than I guess two individual entities. Could this brain with tentacles just be a facade of the abolith? 
Maybe they're one and the same. It does. It, it, does, it, it did it, sound it, like the it, other um, yeah. Abolith reached out to your bird friend. It's true. Maybe he's reaching out to Fang now. Nonetheless, I think our our path takes us that way, um, to the right. But maybe we um, maybe we see if I can get you two on the uh, on the feeding schedule for it. That'd be a nice way to get in there. Yeah, thank you. No, if uh, I can for... yes, 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 of course. No, if I recall, so. This right here is Skull Island, but up north is Skull Port, and I think that's where our brain is going to be. So we think Did that the brain is to the north, the abolith is to the That's not what I was even saying. I'm not sure if you oh. misunderstood me. Uh, maybe I did. Uh, all, all of the above, probably to the northeast. Us Usip oh, oh, and the brain. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you're just saying that that bridge is to Skull Port. Correct. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, there's a city over there, but if you're looking for water, there ain't no water up there. There you go. So, Shep, what do you guys think? Do we just kind of head on into the layer or. Should we get some intel? Maybe get you guys on the feeding list? Well, anybody need a anybody need a rest or anything? Or just charge on use, in? I could use a rest. I could use a quick short rest. Maybe should we maybe dock the ship in here? And that's that would be a risky play there. without just going in it. and doing stuff. That's the yeah, I guess I guess that's that's my fear is I don't know what happens when we get in there. Gotcha. And you see up these tokens of one guy by the blister, they're actually each four people on each one of these battlements as well. At least. Just so you know. Good do to we know. uh do we go into the uh dragon's mouth so to speak, or just uh filter off to the right? Um, Maybe we can. Yeah. I think we should go into the town first. We get to the right, for sure. For need intel. All right. We can certainly do that, I suppose. Um, we're good. We can just kind of. I can just kind of try to steer us in there. Let's do it. So, uh, what are you, what are you doing, Wilma? Are we, like, floating in a regular space, or are we, like, moving? You guys are currently just, like, floating right here. I imagine you guys have been doing that for a little bit of time. Um, yeah. And the fish people aren't giving us any trouble? They, as soon as they saw you guys, it's pretty much they were trying to get out of your guys' way and not be seen by you guys, but because you and Fang rolled so high, you guys did see them, but they just swam out of the way and up to the northeast. If we don't necessarily need to go into the town, I guess there's nothing really stopping us from taking a short rest right here before proceeding to the Abolus Lair. I mean, we're just, we're on the water, we could always give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't personally need one, but if you want to take a short rest for whatever reason, that's fine. Yeah, short rest definitely wouldn't hurt me. I'd like to, I could use a little, I guess, health and energy back, um, without having to dip into my potions quite yet. It's up to you. I, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, we are just kind of sitting Action. in the water. I don't need a. It's not really a short rest. Can wait. We can do it. All right. Well then, fuck it. I'll just take a. Sh You're only down like 15 hit points. Yeah, Wilma's Wilma's got you if you need it. She's, right. she's very good at healing. All right. 
<laughs> well then, fuck it. Let's just go. Now, keep in mind as, as well, if if and when we make it out of this um, Ablis temple, I guess heading back into Skullport, uh, we, we may not pose a threat now to those ballistas up there, but on our way out, word might get around. and So just <clears throat> err on the side of caution. Oh, I have oh. no idea how we're getting out of here outside of maybe drilling up through the mountain. Um, I will cause... say, I do have a flying broom, and I definitely have those guys scattered out. So if needed, don't worry. Well, Take keep in mind that there's also four per ballista, or four per right tower. Now. So there's 16 people total. I mean, you're you're strong and everything, but you're gonna need our help well, too. If, buddy. if if we take care of um, our abolith friend, maybe we just leave. And on the way out, we just wreck shop on those skulls as well. This is um, this is also, or you know, there is always the option of taking on the mountain, coming up through the yawning portal. Fuck no! I mean, I don't think I don't think we necessarily need to do that yet. Maybe, 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 yeah, maybe once we save Faerun, we can uh, celebrate by testing our luck down there. But I don't think it's. Oh, no, well, I meant going up because this is this is in the yawning border, portal. Yes, but this isn't the. F yeah, that is true. I guess I don't really know what floor this is. So right, that's true. Very true. Hmm. Ow. We got we got some plans. Yeah, we're going to the right. To we're going the right. right. To the right. All right. Um, you guys continue to sail on then. Sailing on, sailing on, and pushing up to the right. And as you guys go through this passageway, as I mentioned, I might freeze right now. You guys see continuously see some of this gray ooze and slime and vegetation covering these cavern walls as you push on through the water continues to get murkier and murkier almost has like a layer of like a filmy oily layer on the surface you can see kind of like colors kind of swirl around as you are uh, um, floating on top of this river uh, can you guys see it's mm -hmm. loading in slow, but... Oh, yep, there we go. Cool. Alrighty tidy. So, let's see. Yeah, you guys make your way down to this kind of rougher-looking cavern area as you guys continue on for about five minutes or so through this tunnel. I see lots of, like, back guano and, like, you know, kind of smeared and stuck to the walls and... and and um, bits of mold and kind of mushrooms growing out from there as well. Right. And well, the walls are glistening with this kind of wet dankness. And uh, you continue on and to the left as you guys make your way through to like where you are in the scene currently. Um, <laughs> up to the north or to your left, you can see there's like a, a passageway um, where the ground is dry. If you were to, to dock your boat right here, you know, anchor it real quick, you could hop off and go into a tunnel that goes up there with a kind of like a mossy path. Do I we'll notice back. any slime like in that area? Uh, it seems like it's kind of all encompassing. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's heavier or anything like over there, but it definitely the walls down here seem to all just have like a little bit of slime at least, um, kind of covering a layer along it. And you can see every now and then a bit of it kind of just slowly moves like a pseudopod. At this point, I'd probably take the take the rope off everybody and say, "I think we're at a different level of facade here now, Jeff. Now we have to pretend to be badasses. <laughs> we don't have to pretend." Well, I think one of you does, and and I just turn away, not telling them which one I, I think needs to pretend. And I... He's talking about you, so wreck. <laughs> sure, buddy, and I give him a double eye wink. Do, that do, wasn't necessary. Do we have any idea, like, like how far the layer of the abolith is, like, 
like how far out does the slime go typically um it, oh okay yeah so like how far reaching is like kind of like the area yeah effects. like how close are we sure um go ahead you can make a history check um i'd say that either fang or Solrak could do the same with advantage as well if you were to ask them uh because they have yeah. read about this and learned a few things why don't you go ahead and do that fang i think you've got the plus five 18. Um, yes, yeah, so from what you guys have learned is that these kind of regional effects of like an abolith layer or surrounding um, vicinity kind of can, can reach like about a mile out from its uh, the heart of it. Okay, so we got a little ways to go. All right. Should we keep going or should we... Um, you guys, like I said, from where we did start to see that ooze and stuff from like the big cavern where you guys just came from it's taking you guys about five minutes to travel to get to where you are currently yeah so we're probably like a quarter mile in yeah for however fast this river yeah. is taking you guys but certainly got it okay well do you guys want to put our feet on dry land or keep on keeping on i think we keep going maybe come back and check that out after we uh kick some ablet but <laughs> well i don't think we should do that if we Take the Ablet's ass, we're gonna call a lot of attention to ourselves. Meanwhile, right now we could be undercover while we do the town. How do we even know this This is... dry land takes us to an Ablet that lives in the water? I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. It just sounds like you're just making a confusing point just to make it. Well we could just keep on floating. Just, just open up the options. Seems like Will more oh. Wilma's with my uh, idea. So grab that oar and keep on paddling, Solrek. Right. I mean, oh, if you want to hit the town, we should do right. it before we fight the oh, giant. Who, 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 this, sa who says? Who says that goes to the town? We don't know where that goes. goes. To it's just. It's just. Oh, either way, out, we should explore whatever you want to explore before we go chasing after a giant creature that will sure make us a ton of sound. We'll probably have to run away from at the end of the day. We've Maybe got we ways. It stops when we have a fucking Abolith chasing after us. The Abolith and the brain are kind of why we are down here, though. Just kind of muttered to my thought to myself. I thought the Wrecking Crew would just kill the Abolith, but I guess not. Apparently we're running from it. Apparently we're going to run. If only Wilmore was here, he'd probably kill it. If only Wilmore was here, he'd probably kill it. And just blow dust in its eyes. Yeah, and then it's blinded and it falls over and dies. That's what happens all the time. Probably has a dust allergy or something. Probably. Knowing Wilmore, he would know that because he's super smart. According to his book, he was the smartest person in the group. He was pretty bright. What? Right. He was both bright personality-wise, yeah. bright brain-wise. He actually had the most ah, light coming off him at most times as well. Just remember that he uh, had my uh, smarty thing that made him smart. <laughs> and we totally could have kept that. Yeah, you could definitely <laughs> use that. Well, I'm still, that makes me the smartest in the group, I believe. So you could probably use that, buddy. <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. All right, so we're so going down we're the we river. Keep on going. Let's do it. All right, fine. Okay. You continue on then, floating on downstream. Um, as you do, you see a couple of uh, crevices and in, in, in alcoves, and another tunnel seems to go up to your north uh, with more kind of moss laid out on the ground. Um, you smell it stinks in there a little bit as well, like almost kind of like a, a feeding room in a zoo. There's another tunnel that goes down south as well, a bit more narrow and curving, so you can't really make out much more down there. But if you all continue on or do any exploring, where, oh, where does the feeding sound? Or the uh, smell? smell is coming up from the north. Yeah. yeah so, right, take, a, take a whiff of that. What are you getting? Well, uh, whatever we're looking for, probably that way. It's like eating people. I did. They way. did um, feed memories and stuff to the brain. I, 
I assume afterwards there's probably a carcass that's left. Right. So that would make sense. No. Let's go that way. To the north, to the north. Everything I own in a box to the north. Is, that's not dry land, is it? That's still it, it water. Is. It is. Oh, it is? Yeah. So then we would uh, hop out of the boat and then Fang say the word and then the boat gets tea time. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll take care of that. Uh, Rampoo. <laughs> and just kind of. <laughs> That pulls little back little. up. Sure. And I just throw that back in the old pocket. Bag of holding. I'm just sitting there mildly impressed with how much he can stuff in that sweet pocket of his. It is impressive. It's, it's kind of a cool magic parlor trick, too. You know, seeing this little box, this boat fold up into a box and just stick it in your pocket. And uh, as you, you know, collect that thing and you begin to walk into this room, your feet instantly kind of stick to the ground as it's like you look down it's like a mix of like mud and bat guano and like bat shit all over the ground it just reeks in here uh as you guys begin to walk in here you hear a bit of you know stutter, uh, scuttering around up to the north as you see um a tripodal creature with kind of this rocky skin and a toothy gaping maul sitting on top of its head with three clawed arms and three large eyes uh surrounding it as it kind of just shoves crystals into its gullets from from one of the walls and it sees you as you guys all begin to step in here, eyeing up its, you know, itself and the crystals on the walls, and begins to look around frantically with protection, uh, begin to just bellow out unrecognizable deep guttural barks. You see it just kind of screaming out as it's grabbing some crystals from the walls and quickly shoving it in its mouth. I just kind of slink back a little bit. Interesting. Is, is there like dead bodies in here? Because because you said there was a smell earlier. Or... Yeah, yeah. You don't oh, see any dead guano. bodies or anything. Um, as you kind of just begin to step in here, um, you know, clearly, like I said, you see all this bad shit all over the ground and stuff. And you know, maybe it's a bit where the smell is coming from, but uh, or maybe some of these creatures that are working in here as well. I kind of want those crystals. And where? How far is the uh, the being? It's like no more than 50 feet away from you. I think. I don't Let me go ahead and roll over that. You can see him right 40 here. feet. Yeah. No, I, I don't see him. 40 feet. Do you see him, Carlos? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you got dark vision. Yeah, because I'm cool. Yeah, it's 40 feet from us. Uh, I look at it. It's like, honestly, it's pretty ugly, but you can definitely take that thing. I want to get those crystals. Uh, yeah, I definitely want those crystals. So I'm I'm looking at it. And wait, 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 wait. That's water. How do we know we're not being watched? Hmm? That's water. Oh, no, I'm just, oh, no I'm, just, I'm just seeing if so. I'd cast light on myself so I can actually start seeing stuff gotcha. as well. Um, I just didn't know if that light was coming off of me, but it's coming off of Fang. Okay. see it's just quickly just shoving these crystals ripping them off the wall and shoving down his gullet and like i said oh actually fang you can understand all language spoken right i can you're saying crystals gems gems oh these are mine uh, get away uh, and he's just shoving them in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> this is the best feat ever <laughs> uh i'm like ooh, crystals i i See, like, my feet are kind of, like, in this shit. Uh, but I, I kind of try to, like, move up a little bit. It is, like, difficult terrain because of how sticky and how thick it is. So it takes you... Is that half? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, double whatever, vice versa. So, so I have the same amount of movement as uh, <laughs> they do. Exactly. I'm normal now. Uh, so, yeah, you, so I move up. Yep, you keep on moving up. And as you do, you hear some more scuttering off to the right. As uh, just when you're about to, like, turn this corner... You see another one uh, reaching into the wall just around that corner, and just same thing. Just gra like its claws are digging into the wall and just grabbing handfuls out. Pop, they're falling out of its hands as it's shoving them into its gullet. And you see it's excavated pretty much this whole room. It looks like they've been digging out themselves. Uh, I'm going to whisper to them. Honestly, it sounds like we should do it. Yeah. 
Head on back? Yeah, it sounds like we're gonna make a ruckus for nothing worth it. Damn, crystals! Barbarian, I'm impressed with you. <laughs> I know, I, I want to kill him, but it just seems something fishy about it. it you, you are fishy. you are making out to be the smart one of the group. Not yet, though. Let's head on back, though. Yeah. At least I'm not the one stepping in shit. Up into the west wall and immediately <laughs> yeah. just begins digging into that one, too. And uh, you guys travel back down south. Imagine you throw out your boat again. Rampoo. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys hop back in and uh, push off. You can just sail back down. As you do, you have to traverse push around. Push off the rampoo. <laughs> yeah. You guys have to traverse around some, some rocky uh, pieces jutting up from the water, but easy enough as you know the river's not really pushing you guys. You guys can travel at your own leisure and speed, really. Uh, you see a couple more tunnels going down to the south and up to the north. And as you guys turn this corner right here, you guys can see a bunch of little piercing eyes coming from this cavern to the south. As you guys can hear, you know, voices kind of all skitterish about and a few of these fish-faced humanoid creatures hiding behind uh, rocky structures and, and, and outcroppings in here. Can I hear what they're saying? Uh... I'd say make a perception check. It's kind of, you know, it's a little bit far, so let's see if you can actually hear them. Like, actual conversation. Come on, big ear fang. Uh, so maybe you hear one of them saying, like, I, yo, they're coming around. You need to hide, hide. Don't want any troubles. Ooh, Sith will find them soon. Gents, it seems like we're heading in the right direction. If I gathered that from uh, those fish fellows over there. Let's just keep on heading in the direction. Don't mind them. <laughs> Smile and wave, boys. I give him a little uh, wave. Give him a middle finger. <laughs> That's the spirit. Um, as you look up to the north as well, you can see that uh, it's another like, kind of more rocky area up here. Uh, you see a couple of more like stalagmites uh, pushing up from the earth and, you know, jutting up from the ground. Uh, a little bit of uneven floor and bits of, like, you can see up here, um, let's say Wilma, you can see bits of, like, chewed up armor and bone, and an occasional copper piece or silver piece as well. Like, chewed? Chewed? Like... Like, they've been gnawed right. on, for sure. Like, there's, even, like, there's a... like, bits of them. Of like, the like a big gnaw or like like a little gnaw like um bigger than you guys okay oh, okay well that's that's certainly unfortunate i just kind of point out to them that um something's eating these bones <laughs> oh we can expect to know what that is uh that is we'll kill it as you guys are floating here, abruptly splashing up from the water comes one of these fish-faced humanoids who just grabs onto the edge of the boat and says, Please! Will one of you help me? <laughs> Please! And you see he's got this really like kind of rancid-looking flesh on him, like boils all around him, and he looks very emaciated. Please help me! Does he seem like he me he has good intentions? I'll make an insight check. <laughs> Pull it. <out. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twenty-five. Uh, he seems like he's not trying to cause you guys any harm. He looks like he needs the help that he's asking for. All right. Says, please, this the river. Uh, it's poisoned, and it's not healthy anymore. Well, that's good to know. Um, I kind of just rub, hover, I, I rub my hand on like his boils as I'll like spend one key point to use hand of healing. Yeah, you heal him over. You watch his. Maybe we should get him out of the water too. Although he's a fish. No, uh, come on, beggars can't be choosers here. 
a couple of his boils seem to heal on over. Uh, doesn't seem to fully, you know, completely heal his flesh in the way this kind of rotted looking skin is is uh, looking to you. But you heal over some of these wounds and and uh, get that fixed up. And he looks at you and says, oh, thank you, thank you. Do you have some more for my brethren too? And he begins to just, he's holding onto the ship still. He turns his head and looks back at the cave. And you see a couple of eyes peer out from behind some of the walls. We could use your help. Well, had I known your brethren's needed the help, I would have given it to all you guys. But I, I really cannot afford to waste the energy. I kind of need as much of it. Well, I can, but I would I maybe suggest getting out of the water. <sighs> I want to, but kind of looks down to the south and over, like, you know, kind of to the east as well. Like, <sighs> we need him as much as he needs us. Who's well. him? <sighs> the great old one. Uh, hold on. That's Usith. I mean, I just wanted him to say it. Yes, he, he's <laughs> the one, the only Usith. He's, we've been helping him since he's come to this plane and bringing him bodies and such to feed off of, but he's turned against us. Who would have guessed that? Huh? Why has he turned against you? I don't know. I think... I think the one... The brain... He demands too much. Oh, so there is a brain over here, too. So you see, now we know who's eating the bodies and who's eating the memories. Our team. All together, they... They eat the memories, but who said he he just gets the scraps and then we get the scraps of those scraps. That's why we're not uh, not doing so good. Now uh why don't why don't you guys just eat the bodies rather than taking them to hunt? Who's it? Oh, that is not an option, unless we want certain death. <coughs> It seems you're heading that way. I uh, think I kind of like it. Where's, Half step where's back the, once I see him coughing. Where's the brain? What's what's? If we help you and your friends, how can you help us? I'm not very strong right now. What do you need from us? We can. I can give you information. What do you need? You help us. You, you get rid of Usith. What is, how you help? Well, getting rid of Uthis would help you. It bring our waters back to the way they shall be. Before that alien come. But he's so beautiful. He, he cheats us. He gives us good things. He's master. No, but he's bad. He's bad. And what about the brain? Is is he down there too? Yes, further. Is he big? He's with the the other aliens, the ones with the squid faces. Oh. Well, that's certainly unfortunate. Well, where's that? kind of still holding on to your boat and kind of bobbing there. He just can, points down like the path. You continue following the path going deeper and deeper. You come across the chamber of the Illithids and the brain. Okay. Looks like we know where to go. You will help us now. We will kill your Uthith. It's Uthith, hey, Master. You can't call him Master and then have us kill him. That's kind of 
You know, you gotta you gotta pick a, ch a side here, there, buddy. I know he treats us good, but it's so bad, it's so good. I don't know what to do. You just said that he starves you and you're dying. How does how does that possibly he, can be good? He also feeds us, though. We we thank he him. He feeds you his scraps that he doesn't want to eat. He's not feeding you. He's just full. He's a very graceful master, isn't he? No, he, that's, a, that's a terrible master. But we'll be your masters. We'll make sure you eat full bodies. <coughs> that's a promise? You see him smile? That's right. That's right. We're going to kill a bunch of shit here. He's got too, the, so. these little like sharp teeth that are like spaced out from each other. As he smiles to you, he like, grins with those little teeth looking at you. Ah, full body. All for you. And for friends. That's right. You guys can have all the bodies we kill. All for you. I don't coughs up a bit more. And like, almost like black ichor kind of spits out onto the deck of the boat as well as he coughs this up. <laughs> ah, sorry, sorry. He tries to wipe it up, but he kind of just smears it all over the deck a little bit. I get some like water to switch that off. I, I I don't I don't want black ichor on on the boat. Sure, clean it all up, no problem. Okay. I tell you what, buddy. Um, I'd give him one health potion for him and his little friends. I'd say you go back to your friends and you uh, you guys sit tight. The waters will be purged soon, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, I tell friends, and we'll keep our close eye. And he kind of just dips down as he's just staring at you guys uh, closely, or, you know, very intently, mostly Solrak as he does this. He dips below the surface and then <sighs> swims away. You see a splash, a little tail comes up, and he continues to swim and bops back up until he makes it into the cave again. Um, but yeah. Look back on the guys. That was creepy, but uh, I guess it's good to make friends in low places, you know? <laughs> that is... We Maybe we have some good friends. It's always good to have a friend. That's right, but uh, as long as we have bodies to feed. <laughs> now, shall we keep going? We should, but we should be, uh, just be ready. It seems like we're pretty close to our friend. So I guess no, no need for these anymore. And then I'm going to take off the rope for my wrists. I'm going to take out my swords for my bag of holding. I think we're all lock, stock, and ready to roll. All right. You guys continue on. And if you pass through another kind of tunnel up to the north, um, oh. smell a bit more like bat guano. And you know, it's kind of same feeding room smell kind of coming from up there. Um, you can choose to continue to go up there if you'd like, or continue going around the path. Uh, what do you guys think? Well, the fish kind of pointed that he was, uh, down yonder this way, as I kind of point. Um, but I think that's, that's where we gotta go. To the, uh... That's going to take us to the gate of the Illithad. Oh, that's a lot of fish people. Yeah, as you guys go, you want to go through there, you see it's a dark cave, but you see all their eyes piercing out through there and kind of just blinking every intermittently. Not the okay, I wink. Hang me, I can't, I can't see the area. There it is. Okay, cool. All right, so you continue on around the corner then. Pushing further and further, as you see a thick layer of gray ooze covering the walls now, as you turn this corner, uh, as you continue going on, you see a entry point uh, right here to the southeast. Uh, looks like it goes into a chamber of sorts. Um, if you wanted to look through there, you certainly could. Um, but this chamber, as you guys look through here, like, uh, you know, through a couple of these, it, it ends with a, you know, like a mossy terrain of sorts, but it seems like the water actually continues on into here. And it gets murkier and murkier. Is 
it's the fish people kind of made it seem it's uh made it sound like we just gotta keep on following the the river and it'll take us to that gate well i think uthis might be in here do we want to take him out first that's a good idea because then if if we take him if we take him out maybe we can go hang out with the fish people and take a little you know take five minutes on on some nice land maybe a little bit of friends i don't know what a horrible yeah. idea right and then they'll probably eat his dead body and yeah. be stronger and they can help us with the brain maybe that i think they'd be thrilled to hear that all right let's give it the old college try here So you guys go on into this tunnel or this like chamber? Yep. Hop out. Uh, Ram. Like I said, it, no, the water continues on into here. As I mentioned. Oh, it does. Yeah, it gets slimier okay. and slimier. I said. Ah, uh, so yeah, you guys push yourselves into this chamber, continuing onwards, and as you enter, you see that this cavern. There seems to be like a small island sorts in the center of it. You see a couple of like large, uh, almost like lobster-like creatures with tentacles protruding from their face, circling around it and crawling up on the island and down it, and floating above the island about 50 feet or so. You guys can see this, this humanoid form, if I can call it that, covered in some sort of like white thin layer of like uh, some sort of slime and tentacles protruding down its body, and you see. It's got um, three eyes as well, kind of forming on the where its head should be, and uh, just floating there with his presence, just radiating this aura around it, and just kind of staring up to the sky. And as you guys float on in here, and kind of sit here for a moment more, its head and its gilled body quickly turns and shifts its body and looks at you. Um, Solrak, I need you to make an insight check. While he's doing that, am I able to 45! see in the water how deep it is? Uh, you can't really tell how deep it is from uh, looking um, right away. Um, go ahead and make an investigation roll, see how, see how well you roll, or perception rather. Uh, with a 25, Solrak, you can't help but have this this unnerving sensation, this feeling that oh, Wilma's flying. Um, <laughs> you you have seen this body before, um, and you have you in and Fang has as well in um, in Yartar while you guys were in the underground sewers and fighting Usip. You guys saw this form float above the water at one point, and even Wilmore when he went to. Uh, when you went to scry on your old friend Luke Gon, she had this vision and a place that he described um, eerily similar to this room that you find yourself in currently of a figure covered in this kind of white slimy flesh with tentacles growing down its back and these long gangly claws and three eyes and slits for gills coming from it. And now that you're sitting in this room, Solrak, you can almost swear that on its back you see these fleshy protrusions coming from it where You'd imagine wings should be, and you get this unnerving gut feeling that inside of this, almost like a cocoon of sorts, this abolith spawn-like cocoon is the body of Luke Gange. <laughs> Gonna, I'm like almost like in disbelief. I'm just like staring, jaw down on the ground. And I look over at Fang. Yeah, I'm just literally looking at a ghost. And I'm. I lean in, I speak to us. They said, Bird? Is that you? figure just kind of floats there with his arms out to the side, these long claws just extended outwards with 
this gray slime just dripping down from his body and off of these tentacles that float there as he stares down at you. No words leave its body, no lips to form any sort of words. It just stares at you with this ominous presence. Does it look like it wants to attack me, or can I tell? It's with your 25 insight, right now, it seems like it is just being. It is there. It is, you know, doing whatever it has been doing, or he has been doing for the time since even Wilmore has scried upon him, which <clears throat> you know, was a couple weeks ago. And sitting here, it seems like, as I mentioned, it's like he's almost in some sort of a cocoon-like state, levitating here. I'm gonna try to communicate with him again. Bird, it's me, Solrak! You understand me. Raise your hand. Still, just watch as all around uh, the waters and this island, you see these lobster-like creatures crawling and swimming around, and every now and then, one of them gets a little close to the boat as you see a couple tentacles kind of squiggle up from the water, but then dives back down and gets closer to the island once again. Um, once again, though, no words seem to come from it. No, like, real full recognition, but he is staring at you. You can feel it. I look back at the guys and I say, an eye on those crab things, but I got one last idea. I turn back over. I say, hey, bird! Smell like shit! <laughs> and see if, see if anything happens. And you say that it's still... Seems like there's no sort of reaction, but a couple seconds go by after you laugh, and you feel a bit of a, a reverberation, some sort of shaking happening around you as you look and you see the water around, which was once still and murky and cloudy, seems to begin to ripple a bit, and you see patterns begin to form in it. So, Jen, should we paddle to an island? This water is poisonous. We better get ready to jump, and I get on my on my broom. Zip, zap, zoop. I think we um try to get somewhere safe. Cause Usif also probably knows we're here. Cause something tells me he's connected to this. I have a feeling that is exactly who is <laughs> rippling the water right there. What do we try to get the boat? I, I still can't really see anything. Um, so if there's an island, direct the boat. I just I can't see anything. I don't have enough vision. I start rowing this boat to this island right here. Love to get my feet on some ground. Uh, so that's not an island right there. That's like a a pillar, like a stone pillar that you know connects from the earth up to the the cavern ceiling. Do I see any sort of dry land? Uh, just Lord dry land. No, the one in the center, uh, <laughs> just where. This one right here. Above, uh, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll start paddling to that then. Yeah, now that, that's where, you know, this creature is floating 50 feet above. Yeah, that's fine. You guys begin to paddle that way as you see these ripples forming on the surface. And all of a sudden, you start to see large bubbles plopping up at the surface as well as you guys make your way closer and closer over there. I need all of you guys. Actually, no, just one I can do. I need. We'll go ahead and do Solrak. Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. 14. 14? Okay. As you're like staring That's down great. at these ripples and patterns of um, reaching on the surface of this water, you feel some sort of pool in your mind, Solrak. Something telling you. Um, to join it and to, to not fear any longer. You hear some sort of alien voice just echoing out in your mind, and then you hear that static hiss. It's like you're holding a microphone too close to a speaker, and you know that all too familiar. You've had that happen to you before, um, of course, with Usip the Abolith, and you know that is, a, of course, a telltale sign that he's coming to try to take over your mind. You fight that off with intensity and ferocity, 
as finally you watch these tentacles lurch out and breach the surface. Um, let's see, what, where, are you, where are you guys going? You're right by the island, essentially? Yeah, we're heading to the island, okay, rowing so, to it. So he would pop up right at the front of the ship as you guys are kind of just getting to the island, essentially. And its tentacles breaching over. I need everyone to go ahead and roll initiative. Boom. Hell yeah. Uh, so, Luke, you have 15 minutes? Yeah. 30. 30. Damn. Holy shit. 18. I'm still loading. No, wait, hold on. What did you say? 30 minutes? I said 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You guys see my roll? It's like, it shows it's loading on my end. Uh, I don't see anything for you no. yet. Do you have the, um, in the settings, do you still have the disabled DDB uh, dice where possible enabled? Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's still, it's disabled. Um, yes, yeah, um, yeah, keep it on that. If it doesn't work again, then try, uh, re-enabling it. Maybe. Until, there cool. we go. Uh, is your guys all initiative right in the order, the tracker? Yep. All right, Wilma, you see just as, uh, Sorak calls out and you guys get over to this island, this massive uh, tentacled -like creature unlike anything you've ever seen uh, with three tentacles and three eyes and kind of these uh, fleshy spikes going down its spiny back uh, emerges from the water trying to uh, get at you guys and what do you do? I just go ooh that's spicy um, and I am going to do I want to try this? No. Um you know what? I'm gonna hop. Well, not actually hop, but no, no, it broke again. I just blew away because I got an error again. I'm gonna delete your token, regain it, but yeah, we'll be good. Oh. And we're back. Perfect. I'm gonna move over here. I am going to not at the Ablith, but at this little crab guy over here below. Um, Crazy friend, I am going to cast the, the, the sacred flame. The sacred flame. That's the range, right? Yeah, sixty. Uh, sacred flame on him. So that's a uh, nineteen dex check. Okay. And Let's then see. we're gonna throw out a. It's an abolus, so we'll throw out the big boy. We'll throw out a level. Three uh, spiritual, or no, it's two levels, so that doesn't make sense. Uh, we'll we'll do a level two spiritual guardian as well. Uh, spiritual weapon or spirit guardians? I'm sorry, spirit weapon. Spirit cool. weapon. Um, I forget that I make one uh, for you. What's your spiritual weapon? Oh, it's cat whiskers uh, or something, right? Cat whiskers. Yeah, that's uh, twenty to hit. Uh, Another 12 left. damage. Upsets that's all on uh, this little mud crab over here. Okay, so all, all that damage was on him? Yes. Okay, so 12 spiritual weapon damage, and what was the uh, secret flame on him? Uh, sacred flame was, oh, I'm sorry, 24, yeah, yeah, so it's 36. Cool. Ooh. Big sacred flame as just radiance burns down on him. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, and I need to Burns be back at well. the combat tracker. Gotcha. What, you were in like 30 or something? 30, baby. There we go. All right, anything else for you? Uh, That's going to be... Yeah, so I'll do that, and then I'm just going to kind of get close enough to like fall onto the... Uh... Actually, you know what? I'm just going to hop right on to the, to the land. Is that like land-ish? Yeah, yeah, it's like kind of like a okay. little bit of an incline. Got it, yep, I'm on land. Cool. Okay, Sounds good. That's good. With that, uh, he is going to now crab claw his way over to you. Yep, get right there. Get off the ruler. The computer's being really slow. I can't deselect ruler right now. Deselect ruler right now. All right, there we go. He goes up to you, and man, my computer's like freezing. He's 
gonna try to. You see, he's like kind of crawls at you with this rapid speed, go, reaches up with you with his two pincers and goes to try to pinch you. Uh, 11 to hit on the first one. Not do it, but then a 23 to hit on the second one. That'll hit. He goes and grabs you with his pincers, uh, 16 points of bludgeoning damage, and uh, you are now grappled as he's got you held there. Um, and let's see. He is going to now... You see... Uh, you pinched inside of his, his massive claw and you're squeezed in there and his tentacle uh, on his face it begins to try to reach out towards you as one of them um, smacks you across the face. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. You hit me? Oh. Uh, it's oh, it's, just it's because con. you're pinched. It, oh, it's just a regular con. Yeah. Got it. Nine. Nine. Um, you feel as this tentacle kind of reaches up and grabs around your face, this stinging sensation pour into your skin as you become poisoned uh, for one minute, and you're also paralyzed as long as you're poisoned. Uh, you repeat the saving throw at the end of your turn. So, uh, poisoned right. and paralyzed. There you go. All right, <laughs> that is that. Um, <clears throat> this one over here will begin to just crawl as far, or swim as far as it can over towards the boat, and that'll bring us to Fang as he takes his dash action. Alright, I, uh, I hop off the boat and say Rampoo, and it starts to gut up, and... With Solrak on it? No, he's, he's on his broom, he said. Oh, you're on the broom? Okay. Uh, is that um, is an action to do that Rampoo, though, or is it, uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, doesn't necessarily. I said it to the game log. Um, doesn't necessarily. The item has say, two main words, each requiring you to use an action to speak it. It's the end of the first paragraph. Yeah. End of the first. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's my turn. Box folds. Or the boat folds up into a box. And, you uh, don't want to just, like, leave it there and punch something? If it breaks, how are we getting out of here? Swimming. I don't know. In, in, <laughs> the poison, in, in the poisonous water that you guys aren't immune to. Yes, very Taking smart. Out pull out Griffey, but okay. Yeah, no, cool. All right, so uh, with that then, that brings... Uh, anything else for you, Fang? Any bonus actions? Um, let me double check, actually. No, that's gonna be my turn. Okay. Um, that will bring us to Solrak. All right, partner. So, uh, first things first. I think y'all know what's coming. It's rage time here. I did not know that was coming. I was not expecting that. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so out of character. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to fly on over with my broomy, and uh, I'm coming after this some bitch. And right now, you said his tentacles are out, right? Yeah, he's like just like? breaching the water essentially right now. Right, I'm gonna go uh, dive down like a. A seagull hunting for fish in the summertime. Just, what? <laughs> and take a, a couple swings with Dawnbringer. Go for it. Oh, yeah. 23? 23 with it. Hey, buddy. Is this thing undead? No. Okay. That is damage. That's 11. <laughs> Come on, Stella. You fuck. <laughs> Number two. 28. Yep, 28 will hit. That's 16 damage. 16 damage. Number three. 18. Um, 18 will just hit. It's nine we damage. have this bitch. <laughs> uh, you said nine? Yep. And that will be my turn. Yes, that's right. All right. 
Um, with that, Solrak is you're just staring at him as he just takes these slashes left and right. You watch as water splashes up out of the water, and you see his massive uh, tail just kind of whip out and strike at you um, using one of his legendary actions. Um, tail swipe. Let's see. Oof. 24 to hit. Or 14 to hit, not 24. Uh, can I ride post it? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and swing with Dawnbringer. Now, would that give me? That's just one hit, right? Correct. Not yep. Three. One hit. Okay, twenty-eight. No hit. It's thirteen plus my D ten. Yeah. Get a ten. Uh, Fifteen damage in total. Cool. Oh yeah. Um, with that, you slice into it a few times. You dodge out of the way of his tail swipe and find an opening to strike into him again. Uh, you hear his static hiss cry out in your mind as, uh, yeah, you definitely have seemed to hurt him a little bit. Um, let's see, this chull up here is going to s crawl up out of the water behind, uh, Wilma, who, uh, is poisoned and paralyzed, so paralyzed, he's gonna have advantage on these attacks. I'm Cholo. He's going to attack with his pinchers twice. A 23 to hit on the first one, and a 17 to hit on the second one. So just the first one will hit. He does 10 points of bludgeoning on you, Wilma. Uh, actually, that's that's a crit, so because you're you're paralyzed. So um, go ahead and add 12 to that as well. So 22 total bludgeoning. And that is that. The Abolith, uh right in front of Solrak. You see it's. It begins to hover above the water now, um, almost like mimicking like what you were doing, Solrak, with the broom. You're hovering right there as well, and you see its tentacles wave out to its side, and then immediately, like with like a whip, it just goes and smacks you uh, with one of them. Um, a nine to hit, <laughs> and a twenty-six to hit, and then a seventeen to hit. So just one of these will strike you, as you take. Um, just four points of bludgeoning damage, but I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. I'm going to use a lucky. Okay. 27. That's a bad 20. Nice. Uh, much needed on that, as you feel, you know, you've succumbed to this before, the Abbas tentacles swipes in, and this kind of <clears throat> mucus that covers your body, this translucent slimy mucus, uh, you, you fight that off, and nothing seems to come of that. Um, he now, with that, uh, I think that's his full action. Let me just double check. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, he <laughs> quickly, as you know, you were able to dodge out of, you know, two-thirds of these, he quickly slips back under the water, out of sight, and that give me an opportunity attack? So no, because you used it already. Ah, damn it! Uh, and he slips away, um, finding a little bit of respite underneath the surface of this murky water. And now this, uh, this Abolith spawn that you see in the center floating and hovering in there, you see it's just kind of shaking. It seems like it's, it's picking up some sort of energy, just pulling in from it. And uh, we'll see exactly what that is the next time we get together. And we'll pick it up there. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my god, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I guess maybe we'll try to squeeze a shorty in this week or at some point. Um, yeah, yes, please. Let me know, because mm -hmm. uh, I know we're going to yeah. be taking some time off with uh, all of our travels and plants and whatnot. Um, if anyone's out here in sunny California, Los Angeles, uh, Carlos Garcia will be at the Burbank Comedy Festival. Uh, I don't know the exact date. I know it's August 13th, right? Is that going to be uh, out here? My show dates for now are, yeah, August 13th and 14th. And if I do well, I'll make it to the Best of Fest, which is either Friday or Saturday. So, so. you guys will see him August 13th and 14th, and uh, probably not any other time. Um, but <laughs> make sure you get there on the 13th in case the 14th is canceled. <laughs> that That's said, right. <laughs> and he's the, the comedian. 
All right, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and take that short rest. Uh, I know Luke's got to get some sleep before he goes into work in an hour. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and take it easy, guys. Catch you all on Wednesday or whenever we play again. Look out for those goblins on the stairs. Take it easy. <laughs> Later. Bye. Later, Gators.